Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. I'm here today to talk about Black History Month. The month that is a celebration of my people. Because I am a black man and everything. And it's about all our accomplishments. Um, all the oppression that we have gone through over like centuries um, of living in like America and stuff like that. And even till this day, we are still being oppressed. And so I'm here today to talk to you about certain characters or TV shows or episodes that revolve around Black History Month that I personally enjoy. So I'm here today to talk to you about So Weird Season 2 Blues. This is a really good episode and slightly different than most So Weird episodes. One thing that makes it different is that, you know, it has like a black theme to it, a black cast. This was very rare and so weird being a show in the late 90s, early 2000s. There was um one other like black episode where it had a black cast. But you know, this is Disney Channel after all. This was before the days of like, well, of like That Soul Raven and stuff like that. That Soul Raven wouldn't appear to a couple of years later. And so, like, the theme and the events that happened in the past within this episode were pretty dark for that of a Disney Channel show. But you gotta remember, So Weird is one of those type of shows that doesn't fit the um, Disney Channel, like, mold. You know what I'm saying? The structure. This was before, um, this was back in Zoog Disney, um, before the whole Hannah Montana stuff took like, um, and just like corrupted like Disney Channel and stuff. And so like shows back then was different. This was more like a real like raw type show. It had people that looked like ordinary people, not supermodels and stuff. And so like, even though it was like, it felt real, you know, it does with the paranormal. So, you know, that's when the, 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 the TV fictional part like comes in. However, one thing that was really interesting is this episode revolves around blues music. And blues music is something that is synonymous within the black culture. Um, pr pretty much every blues singer there is, is predominantly black. You'll have like a handful of probably like white people that do blues and stuff like that. But blues is rooted within the history of black people and what they've gone through ever since black people were taken from their homes and brought over here in America and made as slaves and stuff. But blues music didn't really originate till after slavery and stuff. Uh, I'll get into that slightly bit later. Let's get into what this episode is about. So uh, they are in the deep south. They're traveling and they're in like Louisiana. And so they're staying at kind of like, um, what are those places called? Like a bed and breakfast. Like it's a person's home, but they renovated the people like kind of like a hotel type thing. It's like one of those things. And they meet a woman named Allison. Allison's a very nice lady, but she disappears for the rest of the episode until the end. So she doesn't really matter just yet, but her ancestor, um, her, her ancestor does, um, probably like her grandfather or something like that. So, yeah, her grandfather. So, like, while there, Ned is, like, um, showing, like, the group, like, all these different foods that he bought from, like, the supermarket. Stuff that they never ate before. Stuff that he's eaten before in the past. What is it? Soul food. It's, like, um, cornbreads, um... Um, collard greens, turner greens, chitlins, um, okra, you know, like stuff that, you know, a predominantly black family would eat. And so he has a huge appreciation for this food whenever he comes down to the South, um, that and the shrimp he buys and stuff like that from like, um, cause they're in like Louisiana and he's trying to get the gang to like, you know, eat some of this stuff, which they do eat it. And, but we don't really know if they like it or dislike it cause there's no reaction really just them on the couch kind of like oh the belly's all out kind of like a thanksgiving meal and that was nice to see white people have an appreciation for black food instead of like mocking it like most like people do because people don't understand why soul food is what it is and why black people normally eat it it has to do with back in the slavery days see 
the white owners they will get like all the good food and then they'll throw like their slaves like the scraps all the stuff left behind like the intestines the hooves um like all kind of like nasty stuff like um um like the um hurls and stuff like just nasty like type stuff and of course they had to eat something because they couldn't starve because they was die so they had to make the best out of what they could um like stuff um chitlins and stuff which is just like intestines and stuff um they had to eat that stuff if not they would have died you know because they never asked to be brought to this country and made into slave labor and stuff and so a lot of white people they're all like Ew, you eat chicklins or Ew, you eat like okra and stuff like that well <laughs> it's your people fault <laughs> so ooh yourself <laughs> and stuff so like and it's funny because i didn't even know that i learned that from the show blackish because <laughs> this stuff isn't taught to people like whenever you learn about black history month in school you don't learn this stuff you learn about like people inventing like the the um popcorn or say like um uh, open heart surgery or the um traffic lights you don't learn about stuff like that and you don't learn about blues music and stuff like that and so like while the gang is there, they are supposed to perform for Mrs. Clemens. She's a woman who owns a nightclub. And Miss Clemens no longer wants to have blues music performed. They're just other kind of styles of music. That's when Molly comes in, a rock and roll singer. Well, all of a sudden, something starts to happen to, like, Ned, Carrie, and Molly. Each of them, at some point in time, um, are starting to channel blues music. And play a certain beat. Um, Clue, not Clue, that Clue's not in this episode, but Carrie, he's just strumming along on the guitar playing bl blues music. And Fiona's just kind of like, hey, where'd you learn that from? And he's just kind of like with a blank stare. He doesn't, like, know, you know what I'm saying? And he figured he just, like, heard it somewhere and picked it up, but he's playing it proficiently and stuff. Then next is um, Molly. When she's in the club, with um, Fiona and like Miss Clemens and stuff, all of a sudden Molly just starts singing blues music, a song she's never heard of before. Mrs. Clemens is furious and tells her she never wants to hear that type of music in her club again. And so like when they all are back at the um, place after they just ate, um, Ned is on the harmonica just like singing blues music and people just look at him kind of like dude where did you learn that from because they don't play that kind of music but then Molly and Carrie realize right hold up this is the same song we played ourselves like how can that be and so like Jack um the skeptic he's all like well maybe it's just like something y'all heard somewhere you know it was probably Jack I mean, but, but even Carrie smart enough to be all like nah man this is like too crazy about um, coincidence and stuff. So Fiona's on the case. So Fee is trying to figure out like how they could possibly know this song. So well maybe it was her. I think it was her instead of Jack. Jack is barely in this episode. So anyway, it's her and Carrie. They're walking down the street and they pass the um nightclub place where Molly's supposed to perform and all of a sudden Carrie's guitar starts playing by itself. When they look at it, they see that it's no longer in, um, the, the, I don't know nothing about strings and guitars, but he was tuning it and it was set in G something. And, but, um, but when he opened it up, it was set in A and he's all like, who the world sings in A? Cause nobody he knows does that. And Fiona's like, I do that. So then she starts singing. It's the first time we ever heard her sing. Not bad either. And so then all of a sudden Fiona starts to like channel this blues song and she has no idea where this is coming from but she knows something's going on here paranormal as they leave miss clemens is looking out the window looking at them she's hiding a secret but she doesn't want nobody to know so they go to like a blues um record shop and the man himself Bo Diddley is there playing Frank. <laughs> he has this style, this vibe to him. Um, and so Fiona starts playing him the song. He's all like, I, I know exactly um, a song that's similar to that. And he plays him a song from a singer known as 
Natty Bookman. Now the lyrics in which Fee and her family keep singing are different from that of Natty's song, but it has a similar beat and vibe to it. And with Fiona and them song, it has to do with she said that a man who is singing knows that he was about to die and feels the devil is coming from him. And it was crazy. They said the word devil on a Disney Channel show. But it gets a little crazier than that. So like Frank, played by um, Bo, he tells them that they have a bad case of the sudden blues and everything. And so like um he tells him, um, them the story of Natty Bookman. He said Natty's one of those people kind of like the candle. It, it burns really bright and then um, it extinguishes and stuff like that. Like Natty wasn't that great of a singer. And when he came out with his first album, all of a sudden he was a big hit. And then after that, he just like fell hard and stuff and was never heard from again. So Fiona, she started like searching on her laptop, talking to, um, Papa Bear and stuff. And I believe, it's been a good while since I saw that, I believe Papa Bear is her dead father who's living in the underground, who's trapped there. And he's able to communicate via like email and stuff, or chat, I should say, instant messenger. So, like, as she's searching for Natty um, Bookman and talking to Papa Bear, he tells her about Addison Foster. A singer a singer who was found murdered and everything and he was a blues singer of all things so Fiona is starting to do her little like you know getting everybody's business trying to figure, um, figure stuff out <laughs> and she talks to Mrs. Um, Clemens and uh, something I forget what happens but something triggers something in Mrs. Clemens where she's all like how you know that name and she finally confesses her dark secret. She tells Fee that when she was a little girl, this is kind of like a repressed memory almost. She tells him she was a little girl. She heard some noise at night and then she came downstairs to see her father down there. And she had never seen her father um, look like this. He was angry, he was disturbed, he was distraught. Her father was Natty Bookman. And he had a huge trunk. And so, like, he goes up to her and he tells her, whatever you saw here, you tell nobody and you forget what you see. Now, inside the trunk were tons of music sheets from who? Addison Foster. Yeah, you can guess what happened. Natty murdered Addison. Stole his music and made it as his own. I could not believe that happened on our Disney Channel show. Like, my God. It was a flashback, and they didn't show the murder, but they made reference to it. This is why I say So Weird is so different from any other Disney Channel show. Other than um, The Secrets of Sulphur Springs. But, um, so. They decide that, or well, Miss Clemens decides she's going to do right and tell Alice. Because they find out Alice is actually related to Addison. Um, she's the granddaughter. So she invited her to the club that night while Molly and the rest of her band perform um, that blues song um, by Addison. And so off screen, she tells her of like what happened to her grandfather and stuff. I kind of believe that the show actually went there. But they went there. And, you know... When it comes to blues music, there have been so many great blues singers of our times. Most of them, because blues music is very old fashioned. It, you know, it's been around, like I said, since after slavery. And then a lot of it started kicking up a lot more after the World War in the 1920s and 1950s when blacks were moved to like rural areas, urban like um, development areas. And Blues music is just really something that comes from your soul. It's something that a lot of people feel that the term came from the blues devil. Um, something about the devil's always coming for them and stuff. Like, it's a lot of spiritual music. Uh, has to do with politics, oppression. And a lot of times now, it's like, blues music is really about just how you feel. How you feel in a sad kind of way. Something that got you depressed, oppressed. And of course, since blues music is synonymous with that of black people, 
whew, we got a lot of stuff to be upset about and depressed. And because we're constantly being oppressed by people and stuff, people always putting us down and treating us differently. And, and you know, and it's like we never asked to come here, but we're here and we ain't going nowhere. Tell you the truth, whether you like it or not. And it's just like people should treat people with respect. I mean, you know, Martin Luther King, one of the great visionaries, you know, he believed all men and women should be treated equally and stuff. And that's how this world should revolve around. And, you know, other than like Bo Diddley, my God, there have been so many like blues singers. There have been like Ma Rainey, Muddy Waters, um, Howling Wolf. There was bb king himself yes the man um there was um ah buddy guy bessie smith and of course we cannot forget about ray charles and everything because you know when it comes to blues music it started going in the trend of like rock and roll type music and stuff and you know and then it's sad because it's kind of like, you don't hear about blues music. You don't even hear people talk about it so much, but you see other people and other races trying to copy it. And then when they copy it and do it their own, then all of a sudden everybody wants to talk about it then and it becomes like really famous. But it's kind of like, you gotta remember what it came from, you know, and stuff. You always have to respect the source material. Happy Black History Month, everybody. I'll talk to you later. Bye.